Hello and welcome to the Brain Tato's podcast or Pod Tato Cast. <laughs> potato! Pod Tato! It's so like potato and pod! Yes, I yes mean, it is. How clever! Aren't they clever? Potato! Yes, well done. Now sit down, shut the f up, and listen. Woo! Hello! Hello! It is us again. Hello. Brain, Brain Tato's Pod Tato cast. Two. Two. Yes. Uno dos. So, uno dos is excellent on that jazz. Ben, you, I um, I want to get this kickstarted because you're refusing to tell me until right now, so yes. I want to hear it. Something to do with Harry Potter. Right, yeah. It's, <laughs> just to start the podcast off. Right, before we say anything else, I've got something to say. Right, we was watching... Well, we tried watching the new, the recent um, Fantastic Beasts. We being who? Me and my We cool tried beans. watching it. And, yes. well, we got about 20 minutes in. Aye. And we got, we got really, we just thought, no, we had enough. All right, what's that? Well, I've not seen it for the for the record. I haven't all right, seen it. first off, it's two and a half hours long for oh. a film that, according to my other half, shouldn't exist in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, so basically... Um, well, Fantastic Beasts is meant to be more like a, um, uh, a glossary isn't it yeah oh, they, uh, that's a very tame version of putting it yeah yeah <laughs> basically my my other half didn't really want to watch the f- second one because she had such a bad memory of her reaction to the first one yeah so we're sitting there and something pings up on her phone she looks at it and then she starts grumbling to herself yeah <laughs> basically she goes you what and I go what's up she goes hang on a minute and I'm gonna. It'll sound even funny if I do this while this is on because yeah. of what I heard. Yeah. So she goes, "Hey, fucking, hang on." And she gets up and she goes, "Look, she disappears <laughs> out of the room." She just walks off. Is, hey, fucking, I don't want to. Fucking, <laughs> there it is. And she goes, she goes storming back into the room, sits down with this book that I gave her for her Christmas, like for oh, Christmas. Gosh, yeah. And she goes, "What's that?" I go, it, uh, fantastic beast, and where to find it? But yeah, yeah, read that. And she gives the phone to me. And she goes, "What's that say?" Uh, they're making a film based on the book Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. She said, "Open that book." I'm like, okay, so I open the book up. He goes, "Right, is there anything about some twat in Victoria or whatever bollocks it was is trying to?" I don't know. Well, I can't remember the first. I ain't film. seen it, man. I yeah, don't well, know. Yeah, well, it's basically the full film is I got new, uh, new, new. If you're what, listening to this, then spoiler you're, alert! Yeah. It's about a guy who has a suitcase full of all these creatures because of Harry Potter. Nothing is what it seems because he's able to walk inside this suitcase and it's like a big zoo with all these weird creatures. Huh? And something happens. Something happens. Oh. Then something else happens. And then it ends. Huh. But the book is literally, as my other half beautiful, pr- brilliantly put it, the book is pretty much fantastic beasts and where to fucking find them, <laughs> list by list. Where the, where are they spewing this story out of? So she so never reluctantly watched, wanted to watch the film. Yeah. So when they made a second one, which has got even less to do with the book than the first one did, yeah. and the book was a fucking mile off yeah. from it. She was sort well, of. now like, we're talking last season Game of Thrones miles off it. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. So like everyone else up. had a better idea than the people who actually wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, basically, what we watched twenty minutes in, and we just I couldn't care any. I could not care less about that film. Huh. Really it, that bad. It just I I got bored. There yeah. was nothing that was getting that was in it for me. Oh. It, I, I don't know. People, if people want to go, oh, it was actually quite good if you actually bothered watching the rest of it. No, <laughs> no. It ended with Harry Potter. Just leave it with Harry. Just leave it there. Yeah. They put some crappy makeup on him at the end to make him look twenty years older, even though he looked about five <laughs> in five years instead of the twenty plus years they wanted to do it. Leave it. It's done. And now they're trying to like just. You got a theme park. What more do you want? You'd think at the end of Harry Potter they'd have like the witch wizard equivalent of smartphones because I get it. And look, it, it was it's modern day, all that jazz. Yeah. Harry Potter, everyone has all their phones and all that jazz, and they're they're still in Hogwarts using bloody oil lamps. Yeah, so, it's, and that's not even because here's the thing. You okay? You've got magic. You can like make light come out of the tip of your wand and shit. Mm. Why not do that instead of the old freaking oil lamp or have a torch? They can make magic batteries for them. Yeah, it was like how they go, oh, muggles. I was like, yeah, but muggles got smartphones, you're still using 
you're waving a bit of enchanted stick around. Yeah. Muggles right. were able to do more without magic. Yeah. It's just... Oh, I'm getting triggered. I'm feel getting it. triggered. This, this anyway. is a triggered episode. I feel it. Yeah, just oh, started man. off. I watched. I watched. Um, I tried watching uh, Fantastic Beasts and the Crimes of Grindelwald. What were they? Uh, he, he killed a lot of people. Oh, that's about it. Oh, okay. He was. He that's was. Right. He was like. He was a. He was a more sleeker version of Voldemort before Voldemort. All oh, right. So he was the sleek Voldemort, the one with a nose. I wasn't impressed. Yeah. There's a scene where at the start where spoilers. Actually, I don't care. Don't watch it. It's not good. <laughs> I couldn't get through the first twenty minutes. So don't worry about it. This is a public service. Yeah, this is how this is how our film. This is how all of our film reviews go by now. If yeah. I didn't watch the first twenty minutes, it's not worth watching. Basically, yes. <laughs> um, so I, I because I paid such little attention to the first film, watching the second one probably wasn't the best idea. You got Johnny Depp playing a bleached guy. A bleached guy. Yeah, he's got like hair so white. It's like it's probably done some horrendous oh. to his hair from this point. He's playing the bleach guy, and he's he has a like a, a prison break. All right, but it's it's through like a um, you know what? I, I can't finish the sentence. I was that un- unimpressed by it. Oh, it was just gosh. really bo- it was, it's boring. Well, what if we move on to a phenomenal topic, and that is the the recent <laughs> Star Wars movies, right? <laughs> because they totally haven't fucked up at all. No, I I watched. <laughs> have you seen that recent teaser they released? Uh, you know what? I'm not sure. <gasps> yeah, I, I'm that detached from it right now. I already know what the, I think. I've, got I've had idea. my feelings hurt. Yeah, we don't. We won't talk about the Last Jedi. But it, sometimes we have to. I nah, believe we, it, we, there's, a, there's I mean, plenty of people on the on the, the YouTube who will tell you how much they don't like it, and your person, who, person, person who does like it. Ah, but the Force Awakens that showed such promise. I mean, don't get me wrong, they stuck a little bit too similarly to a but new it hope. It made sense. It cost, that, that film effectively cost Disney four, six or four billion. It was like an obscene amount, and I get that. I yeah, absolutely do get that. And Abrams, I have respect for Abrams as a filmmaker. So when he you know, didn't take the reins for Last Jedi stuff, and then, uh, what was it, Ryan Johnson? Ryan Johnson. Yeah. And then you know, they meet up in a room, and Abrams is like, right, so I've laid out all this plot in Force Awakens for you, and I've got all this stuff. Here's, here's a script with all the uh, suggested directions. It goes the one that I think could go, all these great possible directions and then he walks out of the room and Ryan's like oh yeah this is great casually throws it over his shoulder and it's like <laughs> no 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 we're going to like that it and then we're going to that I'm going to be remembered uh, forever <laughs> I like the idea that he just basically JJ gave him like a big wad full of notes yeah and he was walking out he was like I really need a shit and he went to the toilet and I noticed there wasn't any <laughs> toilet paper and I went mm, better than toilet paper mm. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh, I'm not the silky soft texture of a good idea it's right just, on my arsehole what annoyed me is that everyone I know that everyone goes on about the scene about uh, about Leia becoming space Mary Poppins I understand <laughs> that but I had my first nerd rage moment that was my first point there were many in that film oh god the only Jedi that could technically and if I'm going to lose a few of you here the only one that can withstand the pressure of space was the Kablu Kabloom whatever his name was he was a weird guy with that weird mask on because he couldn't breathe oxygen. Coploon. Coploon. He's yeah. the only one that could no, do Plo-coon. that. No, Plo-coon. What am I Plo- talking Coploon. It's Plo-coon. No, it's <laughs> near enough sounds. He's the only one that could do that. <laughs> yeah. She's gone. She's dead. Yeah. He. He could have done that. He could have done yeah. that. But he's, he's dead already. <laughs> so why do they go, hmm, we'll just... Uh, just you know what? Because she wrapped herself in the cocoon of the Force energy because she's so naturally in tune with the Force because she's a Skywalker. Oh. No. Just no. Anyway. R- Ryan Johnson, just no. Yeah, well. And now Abrams is back in and he's like, what? No, he's the- fucked though. That, yeah. That next film has got to do so much repair work, they can't oh. progress the storyline. So that film was. The best that film to me would be is okay. Ugh. Oh. That's the best it could be because they've got to do so much work on it now. And what the hell happened to the New Republic? Literally, it's it's the resistance. And sure, okay, they blew up a few planets but in 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 the first one, but that's <laughs> that a whole republic doesn't collapse under that. I I'm still trying to figure out how they noticed that all those planets just so happened to be within their sight. Yeah. That, but then you know, who's a fantasy Ben? Yeah. God, calm down. It's, it's a, a fantasy. fantasy. A sci-fi or fantasy element. God, why are you yeah. putting realism into oh, it? Oh, good. Is that because? There has to be a degree of corporal believability in order for you to actually uh, 
what, what's the word? Where you um uh, suspend your disbelief. Yes. There has to be some anchor of realism unless you are fully throwing yourself into the crazy corporal clutches of true indie creative movieism, which is that. Star Wars is not. Have you ever noticed that every single Star Wars film, there's no atmosphere on any planet because no ships burn up in nature. They're just a, a land. That is also very true. Which means if someone, if some Jedi, if some Jedi in the past when there were lots of them, force jumped a bit too high, it was <laughs> floating in space. What There's would no burn up. No, what would happen if every Jedi in existence at that point got on one planet and all force jumped at the same time? Would they push the whole planet out and it would be like a giant game of cosmic snooker? I don't know because you What are they what is the I mean, are they actually using at the atmosphere or Oh, I don't know. I haven't used the force in a long time, but, so I can't tell. Back to the new <clears throat> the new one that not, the Rise of Skywalk is not a brilliant name, is it? Oh yeah, it's called The Rise of Skywalker. I don't quite get that. I mean, it just makes me think of him getting a massive hard on, and he's dead as well. So that makes that'd be really yeah, bad. that does make if if they were make make the new porn parody, Rise of Skywalker would be the perfect title. That is literally all those crappy porn spin-off directors that are just there wringing their hands like. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just oh, you know. But no, they oh. released a recent a few days ago. They released a teaser. Do you want me to tell? I don't know if you want to tell you, or do you want me to tell you? What? I'll go for it. I'm completely like, detached. They did the same thing they're doing. They're trying to win people back. Yeah. So they're showing clips of all the other nine films. All right. Trying to get those nostalgia. Te- oh, they're, they're trying to tickle to... those nostalgia testicles. Go, come on. Oh, I get come it, yeah. on. I know we pissed you off, but come on. <laughs> and now, like, they only showed a few bits. They showed Ray, Poe, Finn. And I think it's one of the robots. Why does Ray Pofin sound like some kind Ray of Pofin. book publisher? <laughs> <laughs> They're on a cliff, and then there's another shot of Ray and Kylo fighting because they can't get on. They have to just fight. They can't just talk. Yeah, they just bicker a lot. Don't Animals. They? And in the last bit, everyone kind of went, "Ooh!" It shows Ray, or may not be Ray, even though it is Ray because it's Ray's face huh. with a dark hood on. And she lights a lights. She, she ignites this uh, red lightsaber, but it goes up into two blades. Wow. And as the and, and then the camera goes back, and she presses the button, it flips down into a double lightsaber. Oh, yeah. Okay. Which to me that sounds utterly stupid. I think I yeah, but I think that's <laughs> giving away their twist. I know because you look at Ray's face, and she's got very stern looking. Doesn't look like Ray. You want to say? Go for it. I think she's a clone. And I think there's loads of clones, and I oh. think somehow they they took that clone away. Yeah, they that's how she ended up on Jakku. Like Jesus Christ in uh, Preacher, only with less tap dancing. Yeah, and less and less mental problems. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah. Well, again, I've not seen this reveal thing, so I'm not sure. But that lightsaber sounds a bit dumb. Yeah, because there's a weak point in it. Then if it's yeah. on a hinge, just a weak point. And hell, it was weak enough as it was when Obi Wan just you know sliced in sliced half. Darth Maul's in half, and that yeah. was like fully steady you know rock on yeah. rock on I mean rock art yeah. but then you've got, you got The Mandalorian coming out on Disney Plus so if you want to pay more money to watch stuff you can watch that and that looks okay well I've always been intrigued by a story about Mandalorian so I am intrigued to know about that yeah but Boba Fett I just don't I really don't want the twist to be that he's Boba Fett I don't think it will be no one could admit Boba Fett is shit no one would admit that Boba Fett is not shit he, he's shit no he's not shit he we is. will not we will not argue in the podcast no, Ben because, because nope. why because he actually in the uh, in the legendary he actually comes out of that uh, what's that yeah. I can't hear anything over the sound of a knob yeah anyways move on to something else completely <laughs> different <laughs> yeah exactly uh, I don't wish to fall out of you yet Ben well let's wait another 20 minutes I've been watching stuff as well I've been watching TV stuff oh like what I watched The Boys ah yes really really liked it Please do the only thing the that was freaking me out was every time the Homelander showed up, how much he looks like Michael Fassbender. Oh. If you stared at him long enough, you think, is that Michael Fassbender? But then I went on his IMDb and every, all his photos, he's got this massive beard. He goes, he's like a slightly like, he is like a slightly rounder Michael Fassbender. He's got one of those faces where if you stare at it long enough, he keeps seeing other people. Yeah. You know oh. like those patterns where if you stare at it long enough, you can see... Wiggs is rabbit. totally researching it right now. <laughs> I can see her over the microphone. Is like, really? No, I really <laughs> liked I liked everything about it. Um, I liked the fact that it took me ages to figure out who that the CEO lady was. Yeah. I was like, oh, she's that chick from Hollow Man. Oh, all right. It took me ages, and I was like, that's her. That's the last thing I I've remember seeing seen that, that for years. And, um, yeah, Kevin Spacey and his penis is in it. Yeah. Not Kevin Spacey. Kevin Bacon. 
Yeah. I mean, Ke- we'd be surprised if Kevin Spacey with all the shit he's going through at the moment. Oh, God, there. He, no, he Kevin, was the Invisible Man that yeah. was in there from the start, just watching. He was so. the creepy <laughs> Invisible Man. Oh, yes. Now, with Kevin Bacon, I always just say Kevin Bacon is penis because everything I've seen him in, he's, he's just whipped his knob out. Yeah, why is that? So, his credit should be Kevin, Sp- Kevin Bacon and his penis. Yes. So, Hollow Man, Kevin Bacon and his penis. Maybe, he should, maybe he should work with whoever worked with, um, uh, with David Bowie because um, uh, certainly in Labyrinth, David Bowie's cod piece, I think, deserved an award for best supporting actor. Yeah, because Jesus, Jesus Christ. G- is that oh. one scene where he, uh, what was that weird? Tr- oh, sorry, Labyrinth fans, I can't remember the names. Holdor? No, not Holdor. Oh, Hoggle. Hoddle. Yeah. Where he goes, right up. he's yeah. like, he's like begging, he's like holding onto his leg, and like that was when they were in the sewage pit. Oh, on the yeah. tunnels and it's right there you're oh, like yeah. hello <laughs> it's like no. this big old nothing. coffee's nothing yeah. his nose oh. yeah. but he's master not the eternal stench <laughs> so as we've done an epic sidetrack back to the boys oh yeah I really liked it I, I think personally I love Carl uh, uh, Urban yeah I, I think Carl Urban's a really good actor no I really really even though that. his Cockney was a bit odd it was like a I like Cockney was Australian no but the thing is no he, he kept making um, uh, British references like what what do you mean like what I didn't well, sit there and some, memorise them all for you there's some crisscross with Australian and British stuff like but it was it was, it was he was definitely not proper Australian and it wasn't quite it was closer to British and Australian I'm probably going to utterly get slaughtered by everyone on the internet now. But yeah, the point I'm, I'm going to... The point is, oh, we just hold up a picture that we can't see. Oh, the Spice Girls. Oh, the Spice Girls, yeah. That's why he knows so much. No, he knows about the Spice Girls because of his wife. Yeah. Not because of his British. No, Britishness. Stereotyping. I accept that. The Spice right. Girls did leave. They were out known elsewhere. They didn't just stay in this country. They were quite well known. How dare you say something that disproves my beliefs? Yeah, <laughs> and on a podcast as well. Exactly. How dare you? Um, it, it, interfering with else? my half of the podcast. Who else was there? No, I just, I don't know what, I like the whole idea of there being crooked, uh, like, bit Disney bashing, if I've got to say. Yeah. There's a big corporate business, business behind it. What yeah. might be, everyone's making references to DC. Every yeah. channel I've watched a review about it, it goes, oh, it's like, it's like Justice League, but if they were like... Pricks. I just think it, it's a mix of both. Yeah. And then they blatantly had an Aquaman reference. Um, oh, yeah. With, uh, what, and what was it called? I forgot what the, what the underwater guy was called. The Deep. The Deep, yeah. That's a little bit... I don't know what to make of The Deep, because he's such a prick in the first episode. And you, you almost feel sorry for him near the end. Yeah, Because he's losing... It's, all, it's almost like everything that <clears throat> was his little world is sort of crumbling around him. Like, and that was his own fault. That was his own fault. But yeah. the way they did it, you almost go, aw. I mean, he did almost. sort of do, you know... Uh, Inconsensual things. Yeah, he did do that. Yeah. I'm not saying I felt sorry for him, but that scene with the dolphin did make me go, oh, no. The do- that that was, I, was, I was laughing my socks off with the dolphin just flying out and hit my <laughs> truck. It wasn't my wigs. I was pos- absolutely cackling away. She yes. did, she wasn't paying attention. No. She's just nodding. But uh, no, it, it, it was true. That was, that was phenomenal. Uh, really did enjoy it. I like the star Starlight. The what? Sorry, is that her name? Starlight? Oh yeah, Star Starlight. Yeah. Yeah. That's how they gave her a really slutty outfit. It was all like, yeah, pro feminism. <laughs> yeah, it's all about um, what's the word they said? It's all about um, liberating yourself. Very liberating to look like. It's like no, it's not. <laughs> nah. And that, that was that scene just after that bit when the little girl came up and she had the original outfit on. Yeah. And then Star was like, oh, I really like it. She was yeah, I'm saving up for the new one. And I was like, oh, God, that is, you know, it really does kind of show what kind of, ugh, this is turning into a really, really, yeah. Ugh, yeah. <laughs> um, ugh. The ending's interesting. It's one of those endings where it's that perfect ending that goes, ooh. So, and then it's the kind of ending you watch and then you just have to look at your phone and they go, Amazon confirmed season two. You're like, well, that's that's lucky. Oh, did they confirm it for even released? So they were that confident or something? Like that. I think they might have done. You know, well, I, I'm. Uh, but it was like a, almost like a contender for Umbrella Academy. Mm. Homelander was fucking terrifying though. Well, when you're dealing with a god who acts like a child, we've no no we, we've no known weakness as well. Now I'd like to add, what would happen if you got Homelander versus Shea Gorath? Oh. Not sure. And for those who are unaware at home, <laughs> he is uh, the demon prince of madness from the Elder Scrolls world. He has the mind you know of what? a child and unlimited power. You know what? <laughs> Nothing will happen because they're in two different areas, and this cross this cross fantasy thing doesn't work. It 
does sometimes. I was like, what happens if a lightsaber and adamantium... No, it won't. It won't ever happen because it can't happen because they haven't... What about the crossover with Batman and Scooby-Doo? They did that. Yeah, they did. That's because I think Warner's owns them so they can do that. Exactly. But the point is, there isn't typically a talking retarded dog going around Gotham City trying no, to solve crime. I don't think he's crimes. retarded. How I many... Right, in all fairness... Okay, sorry. Dog with a speech impediment. I think that's what all dogs will sound like. They won't sound... They've got snouts. It's going to be hard to pronounce words. Well, actually, no. I remember in, in uni when I was looking into the um, uh, enunciation of words and stuff and we did briefly go into talking animals and stuff and that would actually be like... It would be more like this, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I can't... I can't pronounce... Uh, yeah. if, you well, go, right, if you're going to do like... Like Scooby Doo, you gotta you gotta really make an O with your mouth, yeah. which dogs cannot do. So they cannot sound like that. <laughs> no, they just sound. Ah, da, da, da. Ah, yeah. Well, that's, that's it's like the sausage dog. That's what they'll talk like. Da, da, da. Well, Dwight, he when he's rolling around on the floor, he's like, oh, 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 oh. I mean, you you, you man counts times. Yeah. He's like, and it's just, ah. you know, for them it's either mouth all the way open, like, ah, or just actually no, they can go Woo, with howls, can't they? They kind of go, ooh, but they can't open their jaw. All I know is, ooh. if you've got a snail, that fucking changes a lot of how you talk. We, I don't know, how, this is probably the most longer conversation we've had of, what if, we should, this should be our own video, clickbait video. Oh God, How yeah. do dogs talk? How do they snout? <laughs> Remember um, kids, don't snout. Yeah, all right, um, what else? I'm halfway through American Gods season two. Ah, yes. Love that. Ah. Right, that's probably my favorite show. I, I, I do enjoy America I'm up to date on it so I will, Next, I will not spoil it for you no I don't because I'm up to the point where me oh spoilers I'm up to the point where media's turned up oh yeah the new media the new media yeah. oh, spoilers again new media <laughs> sorry guys yeah that's about it thing is I can't binge a lot it's hard to binge a lot of a lot of, of stuff I can only redo it maybe our lives are full of stuff yeah maybe one uh, eight one one day maybe in the week I can yeah, one day in the week. Took me two days stuff. to watch. The, took me two days to watch the boys, but only because there's eight episodes. Yeah, true. If it's, I don't like. This is why I struggle with the Netflix Marvel stuff. I like it. Yeah, they're like twenty plus. Some of them are like twenty odd episodes. Yeah, but the majority long. of the Netflix Marvel stuff is awful. I mean, I really can't stand Jessica Jones. I mean, I don't. Oh, all right, but I don't like the second the char- argument now. I don't like the character herself. And here's the thing: I understand the whole like difficult past, all that kind of thing. But things she is not likable, and I don't mean that in a. <laughs> no, hear me out. Hear me out. I don't no, mean. No, no, I, fun. I don't mean in the whole sense of like a villain in a pantomime where you love to hate them. I just don't like her. And again, no problem with the actress she was in Breaking Bad. She's been self I think she's a very good actress. But I just didn't like the character and the way that she has been both written and portrayed. I just found her unlikable and I just ended up not liking the show as a result. You got me into the show as well. Yeah, I know. You but- just went, I said, oh... I got Netflix, and you said, "Oh, what's Jessica Jones?" I don't, pretty sure I never said that. No, you quite actually sure. no. You what I will have quotes. said was that David Tennant as a villain was excellent. Okay, you might, yeah. But that's was, what yeah. I said. I'm gonna drink Coke. And I watched fresh. the I watched the first season, and that's it. Mm. I haven't watched the others. I've watched every Daredevil apart from the third season. And what I love about Daredevil season two is, especially season two. There's a brilliant bit in it that blatantly looks like you know those relays. Yeah. Where you're running and the person just starts to run and they they take the little stick thing and they start running. Yeah. If you go back on season two, there's a perfect, perfect representation of relay storylines. Oh yeah, how so? So, a lot of the first season, uh, the first part of season two is all about uh, the Punisher. Yeah. With little little sprinkles of Alexa. There's a brilliant bit where he has a little moment where he's laying on the side of the gravestone and he gets arrested and then all of a sudden the Alexa story picks up. And it's yeah. like a fucking relay. It's almost like they went, okay, I'm going to take a breather, give me a few hours and then I'll do an awesome prison scene. But for now, yeah, was, there's Alexa. Yeah. You... Electra even what was her name uh, it, her Alexa. it was Electra. Fucking, I've been saying if I was saying what Alexa, I find funny is the fact that I was listening to you say Alexa and I didn't say anything so <laughs> yeah, we are both in the wrong here <laughs> isn't yeah. Alexa a thing that you isn't get with Amazon yeah. yeah well this one's a sassy you can tell you how to kill people and it's like, very... Alexa can you help me kill this muppet over here <laughs> <laughs> like no problem uh, <laughs> and I go Italian <laughs> it's a no problem <laughs> <laughs> I kill them all for you she's supposed to be Greek but she's got like a perfect English accent. Oh god! It just oh. 
I mean, change for the change, I can understand that, because you, you don't want to make things too exactly like the comics and everything. Blah. But, uh, yeah, so that's Daredevil 2. I haven't watched Daredevil Season 3. You do need to watch Season 3, because it was incredibly tense. Yeah, but they left it on a cliffhanger, and then Disney went, ha, 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 Mickey came along. Oh, no, no, the real, no, the real tragedy was uh, Iron Fist. You know, it was Iron Fist and how, you know, I don't know if you've seen any of the Iron Fist. Um, like I that. have a good friend of mine. I call him the bold gremlin. If he knows this, he, if he know if he's hearing this, he'll know he, he'll know it's him by that name. Who said he was a he's like a big fan of all the Netflix Marvel stuff, but even he was like with Iron Fist that first season. He's like, nah, it's pretty shit. <laughs> I then, oh, it's it's a shame because it had a lot of potential, but the first one was too much for him. Oh, I can't quite turn on my glowing hand. Well, the second season, <laughs> it was great. He he knew how to turn on his glowing hand, so he did a lot more glowing hand stuff. Yeah. But and then at the end again spoilers alert when now there were multiple iron fists there was him well, and he made the guns glow and he made the bullets shoot other bullets out of the air and there was the chick with the sword and the sword was glowing and, and and Davos I think his name was the bad guy with the two red glowing fists there, there wasn't any confirmation he was dead so the point is they had set up for some really awesome cool shit so, and then it just they were like nah so the unique thing about iron fist isn't even him now no. there's others like him uh, yeah, there's three, and well, two, maybe three. That's why I've always had an issue with that. It's a bit like um, the Iron Man films. Well, thanks to with Iron Man, any Muppet can get in a suit, whereas to have the uh, the fist, yeah, you have to either be given it or take it. Forcefully. Yeah, but apparently a lot of people are giving it and taking it. Yeah, only the one in that case. No. Yeah. Uh, what else have I been watching? Netflix, Umbrella Academy. I think we've we've have spoken about that, but for the sake of the podcast, we'll talk about it again. It is phenomenal. I liked it. It was very good. It wasn't the most groundbreaking thing I've ever watched, but it was it was solid. And I like it. if it it doesn't have to be like unique and everything. Don't it, I liked it? I liked it. it I just, love the to the total lack of just position. I can't stand just position and no, they just uh, series stuff. They just showed you. They literally it appeared when it appeared when it was ready to appear, and until then you were busy going, "What the fuck is blank? What the fuck is blank?" And it didn't do any just position where two guys who clearly know exactly what they're talking about. One guy would go, "Hey, how is this thing that means that that means that is doing? Oh, that thing that means that is going on that thing unless that happens and all that happens." But you know this guy told you before. Oh yeah, <laughs> pretty much every <sighs> scene between. I can't remember the character, but it was Mary J. Blige and the other guy. Every scene with those two. Surely you mean every scene in Iron Man 2. No, I'm not about Umbrella <laughs> Academy. I'm not about Umbrella I'm yeah. trying to keep, keep, keep on course with it. With oh. Umbrella Academy, I like the two scenes with those two hit people. Oh, yeah. Who's, <laughs> again, I don't know her name, the character name, but I know it was Mary J. Blige and the other guy. Yeah. Every scene with those two, they weren't explaining everything. They were, yeah. they were showing bitterness and a bit of contempt towards the company by talking about it as it was happening all these things yeah which I like I like that approach I always have done um uh I no it does annoy me when you see like someone explaining a story yeah a past story and they go into this great detail of how they look and then the person who's talking to him about it then finds that character later on and then recognises what they look like I would love to see a scene where like there's a bad guy from the past yeah. and the person explaining it and it cuts away to the events itself and everything <laughs> and then and then that bad guy in the present walks past the person they were talking to and they have no idea who they are because yeah. how the fuck would they know what they look like they're just talking about them yeah. they didn't go into the detail of their facial like features and everything yeah exactly or they do indeed get into the detail of the facial features bad guy walks past don't recognise and they see someone else like you you are the villain he's like no I'm not it's like that you are the villain it turned out later that their friend was just really terrible at describing things <laughs> like really bad at describing things and so it literally could have been anyone uh, <laughs> it actually was a completely different, <laughs> completely different eye colour completely different hair colour you know I'm oh I think he might be of African descent too he wasn't uh, Latin like I, I said I think we both know? agree that the only juxtaposition just position that's the word that uh, I think we both can tolerate is if it's something that you have seen but it's explained verbally to someone else who's not there because then it feels like you're part of the history of it because you were there with them as well I feel the best example of good juxtaposition was actually in Wreck-It Ralph 
when everyone was saying to Ralph about how, oh, you're not going turbo. Like, oh, oh, no, no. Yeah, and everyone's yeah. like, why is this going turbo? And then uh, there was the uh, the woman from the first person shooter game. The new game. And then she heard um, Felix say, oh, he's, everyone's worried he's going turbo. She was like, well, going turbo? I was like, oh, yeah, you're new. And then he explained it halfway through the movie. And yes. I think not only was it organically done, it actually made it more impactful. Because by this point, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going turbo mean? And so the audience were really into this mm. explanation, which I think was phenomenally better I think it's that was really amazing simple, writing it's a really simple approach as well you just you talk about it like it's something that everyone knows yeah and then when you don't have someone who's not with it yeah when you meet someone who doesn't know it yeah. you're almost like oh that's the perfect way of doing it yeah exactly unlike The Hobbit <sighs> with the scene with uh, Moria the Battle of uh, the Battle of Moria don't hurt my feelings anymore. what the hell was that about he just went off on one he could have just said nah he doesn't like him you have to go to the whole detail of. Oh. I love I, I I love Tolkien's works. You you know how much I love Tolkien. We both are. We, we, yeah. We're both huge fans. I I freaking grew up with the stuff. I mean, I forget a lot of things, so I don't remember a lot of the main there's a details. Lot, there's a lot to remember. There is a lot to remember. It's true. And I love the Lord of the Rings movies. Sure, they weren't the exact same as the book. I'm not someone who's like, oh, it's not the same as the book. But it was great. But the Hobbit, oh god, especially freaking Thorin and stuff. Don't get me wrong; he looked the part. He really looked like a Thorin Oakenshield. He but did not brood it, a lot. But the thing Every is, what was all scene that? He was brooding. What was all that dragon sickness nonsense? Because here's the thing: in in the book, when Can no, I sorry, pause in, for two seconds. All right, you, you pause me. Oh, Ross god. is about to go for a massive law of the ring. I am but a student still learning of the talking law. Oh. Ross, as you can hear, Ross is building up. <laughs> oh. I'm also going to find this out as he's going off on one, and I will be asking questions. So, oh. uh, please don't play. ask me questions. I I beg you not to ask me questions. The point B in in the in in the book. No, sorry, I start with the movie. Actually, in the movie, they to really to really boil this down to simplicity, they go to the mountain to get um uh, both this particular stone and also just his heritage back. You know what he's meant to inherit. And then he gets this thing called dragon sickness where when you have the gold that belongs to a dragon, you kind of just become a bit of a prick, a bit of a hoarder with it, like dragon tendencies and all that jazz. And whereas in the book, the fact is, once he got that goal, it just turned out he was a bit of a dick. Yeah, why can't people just be knobs? Exactly. But no, he can't be. He's a perfectly good person. That's a human, but he's not human. Perfectly good person. But it was not his fault he got hit by this dragon sickness thing. And then, in that damn movie, you know how he was cured? He decided to get over it. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Oh, like, I didn't realise it was that easy. That is, it's, exact, it's basically the perfect view of everyone who does not have depression or anxiety... It's the cure that they believe every depressive slash slash anxious person should have. Deciding to get over it, it's utterly stupid. Ben, um, as your therapist, I have to give you. I have got a way of curing your depression. Oh, will that be? Uh, don't be. Yes. Jesus Christ! <laughs> How the hell don't. did I not? Thank you. <laughs> Why well, didn't I think of it that way? Oh, thank you. You are truly a genius ahead of your time. <laughs> I must spread the message forth. Yes. Don't, oh. I, I, hey, everyone! If you got uh, suicidal thoughts, yeah. Don't don't talk to someone about it. Just don't. My Just God. Just don't. My God. Think of something else. Oh man. <laughs> Fucking hell! But seriously, it just. Oh. I just. I didn't like the fact that it. It was almost cringeworthy. It, like when all those dwarfs are showing up, and then Thorin's the last one because he's a dramatic twat, so he would yeah. be the last one to show up. Yeah. And he opens the door and he does this. I know it's a podcast, but if you can watch, listen to this with that scene. Yeah. Find a clip of it on YouTube, or whatever. And he looks down, and then he looks up, <laughs> and there's magical wind blowing around him. Oh. I just went. I would have shut the door in his face. It was like, like final nope. space. <laughs> Like Final Space where he does the weird power. The worst one was in that be same... Raw, Gary. Yeah, in that same fucking <laughs> bit in that film. After they've done that really stupid juxtaposition... You said the word, I can't say it. Ju- 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 juxtaposition. Yeah, of the, juxtaposition. The, the Battle of Moria. Yeah. And then he goes, that was my king. And then yeah. he turns around. You know like what? I want to see a film where he awkwardly turns around at the wrong bit. Yeah. Like, turns around and goes, that is mine. He's already sat down. King. Oh, uh, king. <laughs> Right there. Uh, but just, here's the thing, that whole bit with the whole Battle of Moria, that was from the Silmarillion. Really? That was not even from the book of the Hobbit. May, I think it was mentioned in Well, the they had to... Like, they roughly had to mentioned. Fluff, they had to fluff it out somehow. But the thing. whole bit with that fight and that, you know, that that, that was from the Silmarillion. So, uh, and don't, I could see how they connected it, and that's fine. But here's another thing, that big <laughs> bad orc, that big bad orc, 
The, they did uh, have a dude in costume. And his costume looked awesome. And he looked they, nothing like the armless twat they had there with no hair. You know, they, I don't know why they didn't just go with the costume look because I thought the costume was brilliant. Have you ever noticed when it comes to... I'm going to be wrong. I, 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 I think Peter Jackson did a brilliant job on all those films. Oh, yeah, that's true. Have you noticed there's a big quality change from Fellowship from all the other... Something about Fellowship looks something... They weren't reliant on the effects so much, and when they were, they really concentrated on. Yeah, I know it's an old film now, and there's certain bits you can point out, but I don't know, man. Just I watched that film, and everything, the feel about it, and everything just seems yeah. a bit more. Um, you know the lingo better than me, so I'm gonna say it, and you can find a better word. Okay, more authentic. All right, then. You know what? I don't think I can find a better no, word. No, that's that. just that's the only way I can put it. Well, when everything you... about that beginning battle scene. Yeah. My God, I just say as well, just uh, we're all over the place in this podcast. We do apologise. Yeah. Two towers. Yeah. Or uh, humans during the Battle of Helm's Deep. Okay. I thought you were going for a different. What's battle for one minute, word do the hum- do the um, humans use for firing an arrow? Um. Uh, fire. Yeah. In this fire. case, it's fire. Yeah. What do the fucking elves say? Oh, hey, my- 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 yeah, it, was like, it was like a bloody long chain sentence, wasn't it? <laughs> Which I believe translates something like release the arrows. Yeah, I was like, dude, you know, don't just get up. It, even it's though not like you got fucking time on your hands. Even it. though neither's correct, what they should have um, screamed if it was going to be correct was loose. Loose! Yeah. Loose! Uh, well, cause to loose the arrows, sick. which I think sounds cooler than fire. I'm like the only person on earth who does, because everyone else was like, uh, loose here. <laughs> but no, I just think it sounds better. But just that scene, like, dramatic, it's like, just say it, why, why do you, yeah. like, force it? <laughs> but uh, to go back to what you were saying about how the Fellowship of the Ring had a different feel to its effects and stuff, when you think about the, the look effects, of it was very... I think the best way I can describe it, were there any scenes, I mean, there were a few more that you could sort of go in that direction in the likes of Return of the King, but in that's Fellowship of the Ring were there any scenes like that barrel escape in the river from The Hobbit the point is I you've got to talk about it but you've got something that up. was a lot more to do with compositing uh, real or at least CGI real people into a situation that was CG whereas in Fellowship of the Ring there's a lot more there was CG composited into real life or CG real life which is um, it was a lot harder for them to do back then by far so as a result they they mm-hmm. steered away from it. So they had the Balrog, obviously. They had the uh, Watcher in the Dark. They had, um, and they had certain scenes of, uh, uh, oh, the Cave Troll and the Cave Troll. But they are, for the most part, CGI things put into a place. They rationed it as well. They, they kind of, it's almost like they had all the other films. I was trying to simplify my whole explanation for you, yes. by the you, way. You need to. You need <laughs> yeah. to. I am getting there with the lingo better, but I'm still... So there's probably better. a thousand people... Well, I say a thousand people, really generous. But people <laughs> that are listening to this, they probably were like... Um, thousand. Uh, just thinking, why are you explaining that? That's wrong. That's completely... And it probably is, but I'm trying to simplify it for the sake of people that don't really know. How like me. Works. Yeah. Um, you're a phenomenal writer, but you're not a CG artist. No. <laughs> I shit myself when I see you put flip, flip, lightning on my fingertips. Yeah. Um, what was your question again? Oh, yeah. Basically, it was more about, um, uh, can you think of any situation in the Fellowship of the Ring? Indeed, any of the Lord of the Rings. Uh, three, oh, where they... Where it is something in. as intense as um, uh, the river chase, barrel river chase. There really isn't anything like that. No, I don't... To say the pace was slower in Fellowship of the Ring isn't necessarily accurate. In some ways it is, but it isn't necessarily accurate. Well, There's still the intensity of being hunted down by forces of darkness. I was, I was, it's, it, it's an atmosphere as well where you got, especially all the scenes in the mines as well. Yeah. There's just something about, especially when that, they're in that grand hole. Yeah. And they are surrounded by all those orcs. Yeah. And then they're not. Because there's something else that's even worse than that. Yeah. And now that I've looked into the history, like I've started looking into the history of the law. Yeah. I understand why Legolas has such a terrifying look on his face. Cause yeah. He's would know. Yeah, he's kind of knew about the Balrogs and yeah. Morgoth. The uh, yeah, they're they're almost like the elite shock troops mm. of uh, the first Dark Lord, and I was like, oh god. And this one obviously had been around for a while. Even though it's weird how in the film really they were described as being about what, eight, nine feet tall, something like that, whereas this one was like twenty five, thirty feet yeah. tall. Was this thing sleeping or was it buried and they kind of disturbed it? Um uh, it was because uh, I like remember. the idea that this dwarf is mining away <laughs> and then it bops it on the nose or something because it's like Dunk. stuck in a wall. Yeah. And like, oh, oh <laughs> Well, I believe it probably um uh, again I don't remember very well. Or was it sleeping like a, a cat in a cavern, so, like <laughs> Um uh, kind of. It was sort of 
I believe it was sort of in some kind of weird semi-hibernation sort of state, mm. but not quite. It's that's not accurate. I mean, in the end, Tolkien, yeah, fantasy can be whatever you want, yeah. but in, in the end, it was the the dwarves just went deeper and deeper, and suddenly, oh, hello, we've encountered a Balrog. He's just kipping it. How unfortunate! <laughs> just purring away. Yeah, just purring away, dreaming about all his happy dreams of maiming and slaughter, and then suddenly he gets bopped on the nose by a dwarven mithril hammer. <laughs> You know. Thinking back to the days of, hey, remember when we scared that fuck off huge spider? Because like, <laughs> our, our gaffer yeah. was, I don't know, gone to a dodgy deal with him. Yeah. Uh, that was fun. Didn't someone say she could turn into a woman at one point? <laughs> well, shut up, dude. We don't talk about that. Oh, yeah. Ah, war, war, war. Ah, oh, shadow of war. I don't. I don't. What, what, what? Shadow what, what, what? of war. I know you have it, but I. Uh, uh, for all those out there who are nerds like me about Lord of the Rings, and you played Shadow of Mordor, and was like, oh, that's but that's pushing it a bit with the law. And then Shadow of War came out, and you had like Shell turning into into a woman and stuff, and they were like, oh god, what's that? I mean, I know technically within the writings of Tolkien, it said that it was just the chosen form of evil. The chosen form implying she could change it but putting all that aside rather than search deep and hard for a reason to enjoy it just do what i do it's just a really high budget fan fiction <laughs> and then the moment i realized that i was like oh man i feel better it was like a scene in scott pilgrim where young neil finally got called neil yeah and then he was like oh <laughs> all the weight of the world was off his shoulders it's like that. you are no longer yeah, you set, you from are now on you will be known as Neil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, I just oh, cool. Well, Amazon have to spend two hundred and fifty re- million. Not just million, but ridiculous millions. Yeah, for, to the Tolkien estate to do. What is it? They're basing it on um, uh, the it's, best shit stirring <laughs> you'll ever see from Sauron when basically. he's got the rings. Yeah, you can't touch the first age. Yeah, I heard they yeah. can dabble in the second age. Yeah, I believe, and I hope they dabble in the second age because there's a whole lot of uh, whole lot of potential in there. I want to see that Morgoth and that what's his name. I'm trying to remember if it's second age, and I believe, I won't lie, I do not remember this well at all. I'm pretty sure the second age ended with the defeat of Sauron, and then from the defeat of Sauron to his actual defeat, that was Whole the third, third age, yeah. and then the fourth age began with the true death of Sauron. I could be wrong. I, again, I don't remember. I'm, I know Ben holds me up in high esteem for my Lord of the Rings knowledge, but yeah, well, do I catch I, up? I am. I, I really forget. <laughs> I'm I, getting there. I have a I have a profound ability at forgetting things. Yeah, right. I think we've not to exhaust anything revol- uh, related to Tolkien, and uh, we don't want to talk about Game of Thrones oh, on this no. podcast. We'll, we'll no. let that. Um, You've said it. <laughs> Sony and Marvel, eh? Or Disney, should I say? Oh, gosh. There have been rumours, though, about how that's going so far. Only rumours, though. I don't really care. But literally, what was it? It was like, hey, 50-50, said Marvel. And then Sony were like... <laughs> and Disney just laughed. Left. Yeah, Disney went... <laughs> uh, just hung up. Yeah. I, you know, I'm with... If that's the what happened, I'm with Sony. Yeah, I agree. Why would you... you why would you pay for whole, all of something... Yeah. ...to then get half of it back? Yeah. It or the is. half of the revenue but I don't, right again we I'm only going by what I've heard and everything and it's very complex I've been told yeah. so for what I've heard the Di- well, Disney was getting all the merchandise yeah which is a lot of, I suppose, apparently Spider-Man gets a lot of merchandise he's very popular yeah so Disney had that they had that pie and then the other agreement was they could use Spider-Man in the MCU films with yeah. no having to worry about money yeah and Marvel could be in the Sony films. Yeah. But, again, mer- and they get the first day net revenue f- of the box office. Yeah. Which is a lot, really. Yeah. Especially that recent Far From Home. Yeah, true. That's quite a bit of money. I've not use. seen it yet. Have you I, seen uh, it? Uh, uh, I have. Mm, bits of it. I'm confused, but okay. I haven't seen the whole thing, but I've seen enough to form an opinion. Okay. It was okay. Oh, good. Just That's like pretty it. high praise coming from you. I, I I'm getting a bit bored of the whole everything related to Spider Man's got something to do with Iron Man or the MCU, and it's not just based on stuff of around Spider Man law, but it just happens uh, to spring up around uh, him. Yeah. yeah, the Vulture is the Vulture because in some way <laughs> Iron Man screwed the guy over. Yeah, and it was the thing is no one could pay any attention in that film that the guy who invented everything should be the one that we, uh, he Vulture the, the Vulture in the films didn't invent the suit. Yeah, the beardy man did. Yeah, he invented all those gadgets. I'm like, that guy's pretty fucking smart. I'm pretty sure that that, that was a homage to the Tinkerer. 
Probably. Yeah. But um, in Far From Home, Mysterio sort of got where he got because Tony Stark bad mouth his invention or something. There's all that, yeah, there's a it's whole lot of that, connected. isn't there? That's, and they've done themselves over because at some point this was going to happen with the MC, with Disney and Sony, they were going to part ways or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not saying that they need to kill Uncle Ben again. We don't need to, but you can at least mention him. Yeah. And they haven't mentioned it. There's one scene where he had a suitcase with his initials in it. Yeah. And that suitcase gets destroyed. Spoilers. Gets destroyed. <laughs> I don't want to watch the film now. I know that the happens to the suitcase. Yeah. Um, Uncle Ben was in there but you can talk about him you don't have to show the scene you can still talk about him and yeah they've been weirdly to reluctant to talk about Uncle Ben because in the end even if we all know the scene have all seen the scene so many different formats it's still a vital part of the whole Spider-Man thing it's part of what makes him who he is yeah you know it's what stops him being a dick yeah and I just wish they would actually say with well, great power comes great responsibilities and not some other way of saying it just say it yeah just say it God even say in it. the version of Spider-Man where they had Peter Parker be a really cool kid which was weird what the amazing yeah. Spider-Man right? yeah the amazing Spider-Man he was Spider-Man. more trendy than nerdy yeah exactly it's like he was a really cool kid who skateboarded was popular and was really clever and yeah, really he wasn't really dorky at all and really. wasn't dorky at all even though he was massively science nerd but the point be Uncle Ben in that didn't even say the famous <laughs> line he just said it in a weird roundabout oh, way oh man he said it in such a diverted way it's he like, said it in a bit more of a don't be a douchebag kind of way you have what was it if I someone has but then they did it again with Civil War yeah Peter, uh, Peter Parker and that says something like if I can do something I'm paraphrasing by the way if something goes something like if I have the ability to stop bad things happening but I don't do anything yeah. those bad things happen because of me yeah I'm like dude just say it just, with great just power, say it. it's a great line. Just say great it. Great responsibility. I think it's one of the best lines in comic history because it, it well, it's relatable. Hmm. Everyone can agree if you have power of something, then you also have responsibility to it. Exactly. Just, just what's the wrong yeah. thing to say? Just say it. Yeah, this got very, very mildly deep. But no, just <laughs> whatever happens from now, I don't care. I just don't want Venom. I don't think Venom and that Spider-Man meeting at that point is a good idea. Well, well there's rumours that they've come to agreement for Spider-Man and that Venom's going with him there's rumours I don't know what to think about that if that is true if I'm remembering correctly the Spider-Man was already in his mid-twenties when Venom shows up yeah there's a love triangle between and I'm again I'm playing this on my ear There was a love triangle between Pete Parker uh Venom guy Eddie, <laughs> Eddie Brock Eddie Brock yeah. and some lady I can't yeah. remember. might be Gwen Stacy I might be wrong Yeah. and there's like a love triangle thing going on Yeah. and there's also a rivalry between Parker and Brock Yeah. because they're both reporters Yeah. And something happens or something or other happens Spider-Man gets the Venom suit gets rid of it but like not far from how the film the Spider-Man 3 film as, as bad as it was it's not it's, they kind of roughly got it the right idea of it even though the director he, yeah. in that thought Venom was stupid Nick, that's why Venom him. was stupid he thought Venom was a stupid villain they forced him I think the executive said no you're putting him in yeah and then Spider-Man 3 happened yeah and basically killed their franchise and as a reboot it with green eyed amazing Spider-Man with weird orange eyes yeah but uh to have a Spider-Man that young going up against a Venom that older yeah doesn't work no I don't think personally I don't think that works very well but then again there's no reason that Venom can't because Venom had many hosts he had many, many hosts. He could have, have seen a host. Did you watch Venom? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah, don't, don't you feel like there was like half an hour of that film that could have explained a lot? He, was... seemed, he seemed very okay with... He was a bit freaked out. And yeah. then he, he was fine. I mean, uh, there is there is the theory going that his meta Not metabolism, what am I talking about? That his whole bodily functions, even the way his brain just took things, changed because of the... Ne- like in a virus when you have any plus, virus it uh, changes the way that even your brain functions there is that theory I mean in the end I don't I think it's a, it's a perfectly valid theory but I shouldn't have to think that deeply into it uh, not for someone that's for entertainment I mean here's what I think I think Venom himself his character as in not Eddie but Venom I think they nailed his character pretty well as far as a 15 could go I'll admit I haven't read a lot of the solo Venom stuff or much of oh my there are some amazing comics out there there is this that Marvel have this mini series, it's the What If series, where it's yeah, they're doing that, they're bringing that out, aren't they? Yeah, well. and they did one where what if uh, Venom, uh, what if the Punisher became host of Venom? Oh, Christ! Messy. Oh my! Oh, it's very. He literally bit the head off Tombstone, 
and when he did all the tendril sh- shit Punisher was like tendril because obviously this is the proper Punisher he's mm. not a pussy he's like this is not my scene what about guns and then he made venom guns shooting bullets he was like that's my shit you even noticed oh man it was so cool do you think like when he's venom because obviously he gets a bit bigger I like to think I'm trying to figure out in the anatomy where Eddie's head is yeah. within her body like around the neck area maybe yeah but then there's that one scene near the end where he's, he is there yeah does that mean when he's biting those heads off, he's watching there this seven head <laughs> like go coming. towards him and go down or something? How does that work? Well, the thing is, well, I'm a, you know Carnage, who's been uh, I basically confirmed to be in the next one. Yeah, Will and, um, in a terrible wig at the end. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that wig was out the fucking it was like, wig of a sociopath. How appropriate. But point B, um, excuse me, Carnage. He could literally. Make, he could be blown into pieces and just come back together. Hmm. So everyone's like, where the hell's the body? where the hell's the dude inside him it'd be interesting to know how they're going to do Venom because technically Venom is an offspring of uh, Carnage sorry yeah Carnage is essentially the offspring of Venom because uh, Venom sort of like left a spawn of himself with uh, what's his name was it Woody no I'm thinking of the name of the actual actual (laughs) actual. (laughs) I'm thinking of Toy Story (laughs) Toy Story I mean I know we're we're, we're all over the place with this podcast with subjects but that's crazy I remember faces not names that's my big issue but the point B in in the comics he left um, uh, a spawn of himself and then it got into um, uh, it got into him through a cut yeah. so then it mingled with his blood that's why Carnage is red and that's oh. why he can sort of reassemble himself because he's all a bit more liquidy and he's utterly unhinged mm. man Carnage I think is the most terrifying thing in Marvel I think he's like the last person I'd ever want to come across oh, there's loads of ones you've got he's literally venom. oh god there's so many inappropriate jokes I could make it's like <laughs> oh man it's literally like you know I'm not even going to say it so <laughs> it's just it's awful He's absolutely awful. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, talk about American Gods. Oh, I got it briefly. Yes. I can't t- talk too much about American Gods because I've I don't I've been, I'm only about halfway. No, exactly. I have to briefly go back to the What If though on Marvel. Have you ever read the one where um you know Charles Xavier and uh, you know the Juggernaut? Yeah. Do you know they're half brothers? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're half brothers, and there's the whole What If Charles Xavier became the Juggernaut. Because in the original thing, yeah. but if memory serves, the way he became the juggernaut, they both were, um, uh, I think it was in a war, they were soldiers, and they found an ancient temple thing. Because juggernaut's not technically a mutant, it's like some weird power. And then his half-brother's always been jealous of his of, of Xavier because he has the mind powers and he mm. was just a man. And then he grabbed this juggernaut thing, got buried under a mountain and spent like years digging his way out, miles of dirt. But this time it was Charles Xavier and so he wasn't around for things like the mutant uprising, Galactus, all that shit. He was trying to dig his way out while monitoring with his psychic powers. Yeah. So he finally came out, he had his mind powers, he had the strength of the juggernaut, and he basically took over the world. <laughs> and basically prevented anyone from harming mutants. He said, if anyone harms a mutant, I will come to you personally and tell you off. <laughs> It's the best way I can describe it. Basically, yeah, but I love the bit with Magneto, because Magneto was like, I can control any metal, but the thing is with the Juggernaut, it specifically st- says in his uh, magical power rule book, if you want to call it that, that he cannot be stopped. So Magneto's powers would be stopping him, but that strictly cannot happen. So even when he was controlling his metal, he just couldn't stop him. And he was like, what the hell, why can't I do it? He was like, <laughs> he was like Eric, stop, just... Take take off the sound. Just, just go go sit over there in that country <laughs> and stay there. <laughs> it was it was brilliant. You need to read it one day. You all need to read. It. In fact, we should probably just do it ourselves. Make mm. it into a movie ourselves right now. Right after this podcast. After this podcast, brilliant. Which we'll be wrapping up soon because we're actually going to be doing stuff after this. Believe it or not. Oh shit. <laughs> we are. I think we can say. I won't go into too much detail what it is, but we started to what's the best way of putting it just to label things up a bit better so that things aren't getting confused with things so I think I think we're at agreement that anything with us in it that's got a talking dog may, maybe <laughs> and it's us by our names that's the Tao verse we called I think we've agreed with yes the uh, a lot of the comedy aspects are going into what we are considering to be a Tato verse Tato-verse. thing which is like an exaggerated version of the part of ourselves that wish desperately to do well on the internet yeah it's, just a, it's a characterization of ourselves who desperately want to be YouTube famous yes um, <laughs> so there's that and the other thing that is part of the reasons why we've been a bit absent which is, uh, yeah the reason for that is that we've got a new thing 
I think we mentioned it briefly on our last podcast. It's going to be a lot of audio formats, uh, some dramas, some comedies, some bits in between, which we're going to be calling Tales on Tape. Tales on Tape, yes indeed. That's our slightly more serious side, well depending on what the story is. We have already got one story done. Yes indeed. It will be a three-parter and we've got the first part 99.2%. It's done, we're just fine-tuning. Yeah. And the Um, other ones are following up shortly behind. That's all recorded, we've just got to finish it all off. The tagline of Brain Tales has always been we do stuff. Yeah. So far it has been limited category stuff. But that's because that's just what we start. Like we said on the last, like we mentioned on the last podcast as well the problem we got is we are we do the comedy stuff we do is because we just like think of some funny shit and we go yeah, we won't basically yeah we probably find it more funny than the actual people do yeah that's us yeah um, <laughs> and then we don't know we got ideas we I, we have got a third category but I haven't got a title for it yet because I'm trying to think of something that's unique but it's basically our live action drama stuff yeah so um, not audio dramas, but live action dramas. Yes, yes. And then we've got the Potato Cast, and we may have another one because we only just discovered it today. For which, for now, we are just going to title other, other, yeah, <laughs> because other. we haven't got a clue what to call it. Yeah, um, I think for the most part, it's going to be a dumping ground of everything else that doesn't fit into the other categories. But uh, we have a few good ideas, don't we, Ben? We do. We do have a few good ideas. So. They may even get good enough to have their own category one day. Maybe. But we shall have to wait and see. Yeah. I think we've done all right this one. I think we did. I I also think it's hot. Yeah, it's very hot here. We've got the windows closed so that you can hear us perfectly. Because outside there are cars, and cars are loud, and we don't like louds. No. The only things allowed to be loud are me and Ben with my permission. Which, yeah, pretty much that. Evoked. I've got no funny... (laughs) Ah, go on. Okay. Reinstate. Uh... Yeah, uh, we'll cut it. I think we'll leave it there. I think that might be a good stopping point. We proud on about a few things we liked. Well done if you actually stuck it out that long. Well done. It shows you truly care. There's a toffee in the post. There is a toffee in the post. I have your address, don't worry. I know where you live. Ah, oh, good old YouTube algorithms. Oh, yes. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, phenomenal stuff. Right then. Shall right. we um, call that? I mean, I hear the music playing as we speak. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll be done. All right then, thank you very much. Until next time. Congrats to your ear holes again. Toodles, you lot. Bye-bye. Bye.